Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to That Mill Podcast, the close season special with myself, Omar. Joining me today, I've got Stephen Jones. Hello, mate. You right? Yeah, not too bad. I was just saying to you boys off air, we've had our pre-season, we've had our, yeah. our time off from, from Mill and, and the Den, and, and now we're back ready to, to start going again. Showtime, right? Let the magic happen and commence. I mean, you missing it? Are you missing Mill at the minute? I, I, I feel like I've started to get to the point where I'm starting to miss it again, but I still haven't got over last season yet. We won't talk about it, it too much, but... <laughs> it, it, you, you can't... You, you're always sort of looking on Twitter and stuff for that news. You're looking for that transfer or something, but it's still a little bit raw that we yeah. kind of messed it up a little bit. No, I have to agree with you there, mate. Um, welcome to Dan. Hello, mate. How are you doing? You good? Hello, mate. Yeah. Um, just a note, we are recording this on the Tuesday where it's been about 30 degrees for about four days in a <laughs> row. And I have to say, hay fever has absolutely crucified me these last few days. The, um, mute, the mute button will be your friend, don't worry. <laughs> oh, well, mate. <laughs> Mickey's a specialist yeah, no. the mute button anyway, so <laughs> yeah. Yeah, towards him anyway. But no, I mean, yeah. thanks for coming on, Dan, as always. And uh, yeah, I mean, we're going to crack on with the show straight away and talk about a new signing at the Den, guys. Kevin Nisbet joined on Saturday. It was announced. Stephen, a bit out of the blue. Didn't see it. I mean, surprised it came along with the way it did and the time it did, I suppose. But yeah, Kevin Nisbet's a middle player, mate. Signed from Hibs. Second time lucky. It's, it's interesting you say that because obviously a couple of days before it had been reported that we'd made a bid for Lyndon Dykes and the kind of m- momentum, the shift had gone from this bit to, to Dykes and then all of a sudden it was like, oh, no, he signed. And you had the, the Richard Cawley sort of uh, seal of approval as soon as he, he sort of tweets it out. You, you kind of know it's it's legit. And, uh, you know, Scotland were reporting £2 million. He's suggesting it's closer to the million pound mark. So not only have we got our man who's possibly a little bit fitter, but we've managed to get him a bit cheaper than what we would have six months ago. Absolutely. And obviously on the back of a good second half of the season, Dan, on his return mm. at Hibs after his injury. Happy with the signing of him? Second time lucky, mate? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I said it quite a lot when I uh, first came on up at the end of the season. We desperately need at least another body up there. Um, but, you know, he looks like he's came back fit, firing from his injury. Um, hasn't had another injury, I don't think, in the second half of the season. Uh, maybe a minor one, which I might have missed. But, you know, overall, certainly looks like he knows where the uh, the back of the net is. I think he's got was it 12 and 19 at the end of last season, which is a very impressive return. And, you know, I always think in terms of strikers... Um, you know, if, if you there's one thing that you can't really teach strikers, and that is that knack of like where to be in the box, right place, right time. Um, so you know, let's hope he can translate some of his form uh, from Scotland down to the Den. That'd be uh, greatly appreciated. The cynic in me is always okay. You sign a goal scorer, but you need to provide the chances for him at the same time too. And I don't know. I feel like it's always something we've struggled with in the past, but with the likes of Fleming in that side as well, Stephen. Hopefully, he's the added compliment to us that we need in our firing line to kind of kick on and score some more goals for us this season. I think so. I think the other thing as well is that it just takes a little bit of pressure off of Tom Bradshaw. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we all knew that they kept rolling him out last year. It was Bradshaw or nothing, really, in the in the sort of centre forward position. So, what it means for for him? Are we going with a two? Are we going to rotate a little bit more? That that. You know, maybe with Nisbet's injury, you could see, you know, Bradshaw get a run of games and Nisbet get a run of games. But if you're a striker and you're scoring goals, you're probably not going to want to come out of the side. So, um, but it certainly looks like it will bolster the numbers. You know, last year it was two players scoring all the goals. If you've now got a third in the mix, those games may be that we were, you know, nil nil or one nil defeats. You, you might find that Nisbet is the, is the guy to, to to get us another goal, but. As Dan said, good form for Scotland in Scotland. Got himself back in the Scottish um, national side, which now makes it more interesting to go and watch them because we'd like to maybe get a glimpse of him and see what he can do on the national stage. But um, it's exciting signing, and and certainly will will probably we hope add the numbers that we needed that we didn't quite get from from others. Absolutely. I mean, thirty nine goals and one hundred one appearances at Easter Road with Hibs. They finished fifth last season in the, in the Scottish Premier League, so they made the top half and was in the top half split. A lot gets said, I suppose, about the Scottish League, um, Dan. But I mean, you know, like you said, twelve goals and nineteen towards in the season. I think he got fourteen a couple of seasons ago. Last season he got five and twenty six. The season before last, I so he knows what the back of the is, like you say, there. And obviously, he gets his stick. But you know, we've seen players come down from Scotland and do well in this in this uh, in England, and maybe there's no difference why he can't be the one for us. 
Yeah, and I think, you know, if, if you look at trying to buy a proven goal scorer at this level with the current market rate, you are going to be looking probably something close to £10 million, possibly, depending on the player you're going for. Very few exceptions. I mean, the only real exception I can kind of think of was Dwight Gale when he went to Stoke last summer, and I think he's only scored three or four all season. Mm -hmm. So... I know he was linked with him actually last summer, so it probably looks like we've even dodged a bullet there considering the wages he'll be on. But, you know, ev you know, we've got to maybe look more outside the box. You know, who would have put, you know, money on a £1, £1.7 million Zian Fleming coming in and being, you know, up there with, well, winning our player of the season and then arguably in the league being one of the signings of the season possibly as what a lot of, not just you know, Millwall people say outside of Millwall. But I think it also gives us now a bit more of a maybe tactical, I, I wouldn't call it a dilemma, maybe a bit more of an advantage now. Obviously, Rowett hasn't really played Watmore or Vogel Sammer up front. Um, so, you know, Nisbet, he, he probably considers Nisbet as an out-and-out -out striker. Maybe he does maybe look a bit more now to that 5-3-2 that he did try and start the season with and didn't work out rather than just 4-2-3-1. Maybe he looks at 4-4-2. We, we will see when the season, well, we, when pre-season starts, what, he, what he's rotating with. But I think that that will be, you know, something that could play into our favour. What are you thinking about that, Stephen? Formation change? Or, I mean, early to say, we've not seen the rest of our signings. And like, like Dan said, pre-season still to come. But it does present some sort of conundrum because, you know, Bradshaw was at 17 goals at the end of the last season. If we're playing well up front, it'd be quite harsh on him to not start the season at least. Yeah, it, obviously it's difficult to know what direction Rowett wants to go in. I think we all know, we've all kind of seen enough of Rowett now to realise he probably does want to play a five at the back or the wing back system. He was forced to change it last year and, and rightly so and, and, you know, deserves applaudits for that. Great. But I think deep down and in his mind, he's thinking, right, let's, let's try and do this again. And let's try and get this right. I, the only thing I would say with that is that if we go down that route again, it's likely that we're not going to be signing any wingers because it's or it's wing backs that you, you'll be bringing in. So um, he has to get it right. But I would like to see Nisbet and, and Bradshaw perhaps as a two. Mm -hmm. I think, I think you know, they're both maybe similar type players. They're not target men, but, but you know, sometimes Bradshaw will drift out wide and he hasn't got someone in the... He'll put a ball in the box and there's no one there to, to, to put it away. Mm -hmm. So... I think we might see a tactical change, but of course, you know, first signing of the summer, it's very difficult to know what route, but you'll know what route we go down based on maybe the second, third, fourth signings, because you know, you'll, you'll, you'll see what he's thinking is. I suppose versatility is a big thing, obviously, and, you know, he did change it at Blackpool, probably would have kept it if Leonard wasn't injured last game of the season, I suppose. Um, I suppose that's what you kind of need to have, isn't it, Dan, as well, because, you know, you've got to catch opposition off guard sometimes, have the options to change things up occasionally. And obviously, just you know, have that kind of ability to change it during the game as well, especially with the five subs that Mickey always bangs up with anyway when I'm in the podcast with him. I mean, it's it's obviously good to have that kind of niche for our bow, I suppose, isn't it? Yeah, and I think as well, it's not the 2022-23 season, the 21-22. There was times, I certainly remember at Luton away, it certainly felt like um, when we had a front three of um, Jed, Afobe and Bradshaw, Bradshaw would often drift out onto the left-hand side Wallace on the right, Afobe through the middle, and then at other times during the game, it would be more of the Afobe Bradshaw partnership up top, and Jed is sort of playing in that number 10 role. So, you know, let's just see what the, as we say, it's far too early to kind of second guess what we're going to do. I think, as we've said, Raul would like to play more with a, a three stroke five, however you see it. Although, you know, where where do then other players fit into this? You know, you've obviously got Watmore as a as a January signing. Where where does he fit into this? Do do, you, do he, does he see them and Vogel Samra strikers? Then where does SA fit into it as well? Obviously, you know, we're all very keen to see him get a bit more game time going into the next season. I know we're going to touch on him later. Obviously, scored for the uh, England Youth Boys um, in the week. Um, so you know, we don't want to stunt his development either by not giving him the adequate game time. So it's going to be interesting. But yeah, it's it's good to have that that versatility. If you're saying no more wingers, Steve, does that mean we're not going to sign Ollie Burt back on a permanent? What's going on, mate? <laughs> After the TikTok of Ollie Burke and <laughs> Megan McKenna, I don't think we can ever see him in a middle shirt ever again. Prior to that, <laughs> and I know you can't base a, a signing on a TikTok, but he, I think he did sort of start to come into his own, but I just think the club 
I think he was an easy option in January. We all know that. And whilst it, there may be something there, I think they'll they'll look to to move away. But you can't have your Millwall signings on TikTok <laughs> doing doing things like that. It just doesn't. It just doesn't work. <laughs> so what of so the elephant in the room about this bit, then, guys? Obviously, you know we did try to sign him in January. He came down for his medical. You see the picture of him when he went back to Glasgow Airport with his big suitcase. It wasn't a lot travel suitcase. It was a I'm moving down to England suitcase there. I mean, is there a risk because of his injuries? At the time, it was reported because of his injuries, he didn't sign for us. Well, it was reported he had a change of heart. Where do we sit on that now? And I know, obviously, there's been an interview since where he said it wasn't meant to be and I had a change of heart at the time. I don't know. There's, there's a lot to be read into that. I don't know what you think, Dan. Where do you kind of sit on that scenario? And what risk does it present? Because he didn't play, I think, for nine months before he came out last in December. I mean... Master strike from Millwall, or is it kind of forgiven, forgotten, or what's what's the? Well, what do you feel? We've we've got the deal j- cheaper, so that's always a good start for a club with a budget of our size. If we can get players, you know, for a better price, that then why not? Um, you know, he's played six, he's got six months of football under his belt. Whenever I've seen him, he's looked sharp, um, looked quite fit. His injury record previously wasn't actually too bad I didn't think you know before his ACL let's not forget as well when Bradshaw signed he did his ACL and he missed most of his I think it was his first season wasn't mm. it great point um, yeah, great point yeah so you know and he's, he's came good now so you know I think there will have to be some kind of minute management you know I think obviously a prime example of minute management this season was obviously when Bradshaw scored his actually against Sheffield United and then we only saw him for about 20 minutes v Burnley so but to actually now have a, another you know probably more of a natural striker to do that if we do continue playing the one up top is, is certainly going to be more welcome. Stephen, what do you reckon? I mean, on that whole kind of saga? It's interesting because on his interview on the Wall, the Millwall TV, he said that he didn't feel it was the right time to come to us in January. That that was basically his words, what how he went about it. And I don't really understand that. To be honest with you, I don't understand if if a, if a club's agree a fee, you, you've got the intentions coming down to down south from Scotland. I don't understand why you wouldn't make that jump, especially as it's not like he was join, would have been joining a relegation battle. He was joining mm. a potential playoff push. I don't think we should look too much into that. He's played his minutes. He's got back into the Scotland squad. He's obviously fitter now than what he was in January. But I think that whole scenario was very, very confusing. I think we should just look at it right. He's signed now, as Dan said, with a club of our budget. If you can get players cheaper, fantastic. You can use money elsewhere, which I'm sure we'll come on to potential targets and, and, and other transfers shortly. But um, yeah, it was. it's all just very bizarre. But I, I guess much like Rowett did with Fleming, he chased him for trans- previous transfer window and now he's finally got his man. So it's obviously one that they really, really wanted to get done. Maybe you look at the cynic guys and see 12 goals and 19 second half of the season. Could that have been a difference between the playoffs and not playoffs for Millwall? It's a risk, calculated risk, isn't it, at the time? And it's like a roll of the dice. But like we say, you know, we've got the man for a cheaper fee. Um, and, you know, I think the reaction I normally read into online from the opposition fans and we sign players and also their manager is interesting as well. Um, Lee Johnson was talking to London News Online, or I don't know if it was quoted from another paper up north, but they just stole their story. They said, well, this point to losing Izzy after he did so well for us on his return. But I understand that he wanted to go on a new adventure down south. Although he will be missed, this presents a new opportunity for someone else to step into the role. We thank him for his contribution, wish him all the best in England. Even the chief exec for the Hibs was saying, after Science Day in January, Kevin informed us he wanted to leave the football club this summer, which we understood. Following those discussions, we had to ensure we had to get the best possible deal for him. We're happy with the fee we received and we wish him all the best with Millwall next season. Interesting one, right? I mean, they're obviously got to lose him, but... What do you reckon, Steve? It's, it's kind of a weird reaction, isn't it? I mean, even their fans are quite glad to lose him, but it's like the whole kind of saga story that like I said continues a little bit there in my head a little bit, but I suppose that kind of concludes it a little bit, especially from their side. I don't understand how the how the chief... I didn't actually know that. I didn't, the chief exec has said he's happy with the fee that they got yeah. for him, but they could have had double the fee for him in January. It, they should forgive me all pulled the plug, though. Do you know what I mean, I, it, like yeah. I said, it's done now, it's buried, it's fine, but it is an interesting one, I think, that will... I don't know. Maybe we'll hear the full story one day in the near future. I mean, if he look, all all we know is he's now I, I, he's not going to have. I know he's 
you know over a million pound, but he's not going to have the record goal, uh, the record signing tag on him. Fleming's got that, and Fleming's done well last year. I know he's still going to be the. He may not be after this summer, but I th- I, now we've spent a million pounds. I can't see us breaking our transfer record this summer. But he doesn't come in with that pressure. He just comes in as a striker who's who's there to to score goals, not the record signing who has to hit the ground running. Very true. Dan, anything else to add on this bit before we move on? Uh, for me, the the saga's closed. You know that he's a Millwall player now. Uh, I just want I want to get I want to get behind him. I want to see him score goals. Um, you know, and I want I want him to hopefully be that difference maker for us this season. If he wasn't at the end of last season, um, so you know, if if you're listening, Kevin, welcome to Millwall. Best of luck to you. Um, <laughs> we all look forward to cheering you on down the den. Definitely, I feel I echo that. I mean, just to end on what Wright said about him, it's a fabulous, a fabulous addition for us. Kevin's a real goal scorer, but has many other attributes to contribute to the squads. And this it actually quite excited me reading this earlier. So when I spoke to him, you can tell he's raring to go, and excited to play in front of our fans. He thrives off that energy from the supporters, and I'm sure they'll get that exact same buzz from him as well. Alex Aldridge also had a comment as well, guys, in the Summit News, this one. Kevin is a player who we are delighted to add to the ranks at Millwall. We've been long-term admirers of him and feel he had real quality to goals and goals to Gary's squad. He has, a real, he has really brought the, into the project at the club. I really look forward to seeing him in that Millwall shirt. Stephen? Or Aldo's even saying it's good signing. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, sure. I, look, I think we all know that there's a lot of... Um, there's a lot of caution where with, with um, Aldo and, and how he's managed to get into the position he has. However, he is in that position. It's his job to, to make us better, to improve us. And if the manager thinks he's the right fit, if the recruitment team think he's the right fit, then as Dan said, you know, we, we look forward to seeing him in a mill shirt and, and back him all the way. And, and hopefully he's as successful as, as uh, his numbers perhaps suggest. Fingers crossed. I think I have everything you guys have said there and hopefully we see this bit in a mill shirt at the start of the season. No injuries, please, touch wood. <laughs> and we go from there. Right, let's talk about some general other news. I mean, we'll start on, you mentioned Roman Essay uh, earlier, uh, Dan. I mean, he scored a goal, didn't he, under 18s against Norway, I believe. Um, and it's quite a strong squad they've got there, but it's quite impressive from him, I thought. And it's obviously grabbing the headlines on the international stage as well, mate. Yeah, um, I will just quickly add on this bit, um, by the way. Um, mm-hmm. Nice for the club to get some business done early, yeah. get him in for pre-season, <laughs> um, you know, get him up to speed, hopefully, if there is still any lingering injury. Makes a nice change. Um, yeah, you know, we're all really excited for him. I did go to the under-23s game. I thought he was one of the better players on the pitch that game. And, you know, mm-hmm. he's he's mixing it with... He's probably one of the very few players that isn't in one of the, you know, elite academies um, that are playing in that England team at the minute. Um, and I, I personally always think if you want to develop as a as a young player, you're probably better off going out to play men's football. Um, so you know, we're all really excited to see him. Um, you know, and he's hopefully let's not hope he doesn't attract too much uh, transfer interest this summer. Because um, we all, all know, obviously, a few years ago, Man City nicked um, Edouizi and uh, Giabi off us, and obviously we ended up with sell-ons and and whatnot. But you know, it would have been nice to see. I feel like fans always get behind academy players a little bit more. It's always nice to see academy players come through. Absolutely. And I think we all echo the same thoughts there. I mean, it's just some of these names, Stephen, that, you know, SA's playing with there. I think, you know, Joby Bellingham's in this squad for England. You know, there's some real talent in there that are linked away with moves to bigger clubs and big fees touted. It's kind of gone under the radar, SA. And like Dan's saying, we kind of hope that to stay the case and stay the same. But if he's scoring goals at that level, it's going to start to, you know, pick up natural suitors for him, isn't it? And that interest will start to come along if, if we're not too careful. I think the club knew. It was obvious. They knew how good he was. They knew they had a star player on their hands. Um, just on a side point um, on SA, I played in the Food Hub, uh, the Lions Food Hub Cup, the first charity game that was organised by... Um, Phil Clark and yeah. before the game he come into the dressing room and said oh, I've got a um, got a special guest for you and he was like, mm, yeah alright and Romain Essay actually was at the ground and come into the changing room spoke to us and he's just a down to earth grounded person he just loves his football if he'd have had his boots with him he'd have probably played in that game and made us all look stupid but, <laughs> but he, he was just lives and breathes football and it's a breath of fresh air he's young he's clearly got the right mentality he's clearly got good people around him that's 
that's guiding him, that's advising him. He signed a long-term deal at the club. And when he goes off to England, he's only going to get better because he's playing with that next step up. That you know, Those players, I mean, some of them are probably from Arsenal's academy, Chelsea's yeah. academy, Man City's academy. They're playing with top players and he can only get better. I think there's a lot of talk that he needs to be playing next year. Raul, it's made a little bit of a... I don't know if he's made a bit of an issue by that comment last year saying he's going to be a starter for us next year because fans are going to look at that and go, right, where is he then? Um, but I certainly think in in the first half of the season, if we see Romain SA starting games, I think we'll see goals and the interest will go through the roof. Another player that actually played in that under-18s game is Adrian Blake, who just went to FC Utrecht from Watford, and I think they played a multi-million pound fee for him. I mean, it highlights, like I was saying there, obviously, to Stephen there, Dan, you know, these are top calibre under-18s, best in the country, best English talent, at least around through the academies. You know, what he's saying now, Rowett's comments, we're expecting and hoping he makes the step up, but it'd be an interesting one to see how it unfolds with him, I suppose. Yeah, but if he if he does, you know, possibly if we and as well if we stick with that four two three one and he does become a more regular starter, you possibly look at our right hand side of having Danny McNamara as your right back, and Billy Mitchell as your right centre mid, and then Roman Esse as your right winger. Now, as a Millwall fan, seeing three academy players on the pitch would excite me, you know, and obviously I, yeah. I would get behind them, you know. Uh, I feel like with academy players, you know, when they do play poorly, they may come in for scrutiny, maybe a little bit easier. Agreed. Um, than others because they because the fans you know that it's tough love isn't it when mm. they do well we absolutely love them and you know when they don't do so well you know they're probably gonna get a bit of stick but you know yeah it's, it's exciting to have a player like that coming through the youth academy and obviously the youth team winning the cup you know it looks to be a few other decent players in there that I hope get a look in during pre-season um, so you know hopefully it's, a, it's an exciting time for the academy and progression into the first team. It feels like a cycle. I think these things ha- tend to happen quite a bit. I remember, like, you know, when, say, for example, we had Morrison and he's pumped for us on, in, when we were first got promoted to the Championship on the jacket. David Falls playing for Ireland. You know, got Bradshaw playing for, in this case, now at Wales. Nisbets was Scotland. You've got Imaku, who's also on the 21s as well, Stephen, for Ireland. You know, th- they're starting to get the headlines. And you can see, I think that's the progress we're making off the field, isn't it, mate, as well, and on the field in that sense. And also, I'm going to have to, because I'm part of the fan club, George Savile. Northern Ireland yeah, can't, can't, can't miss him out. Well is in the main yeah. squad for Ireland as well, isn't he? As well, he's in the yeah. training squad at least. You know, there's, there's, we're starting to get recognition. And our players are starting to kind of climb up that level, aren't they? A little bit. And I think that's that is testament to uh, again to row it from taking us from a side that perhaps believed we were underdogs or led to believe that we were underdogs to a to team of believers and, and people that think that, you know, we can play football, we can play at this level, we do deserve to be here. And OK, they're not playing for Brazil and France and, and Argentina, fine, but yeah. they're international footballers. They they, they share the stage with, with those those big teams. And it's, it's only a good thing. It only enhances the club. And also, again, with potential transfer targets if they do have ambitions of making their national side they can look at our squad and go well you know if you if you do put your head down you might get an opportunity by by playing for this football club absolutely and I think that's it now isn't it I mean Dan like I sometimes say you want to put the pressure on the manager to play them but I suppose we've got to trust his judgment let's say for example Danny Matt Billy Mitchell if they're good enough they will play so you need to kind of trust his judgment on that and like Stephen's saying there that's credit to Rout for his kind of progress with the players yeah uh, huge credit to him, you know, obviously bringing up the players' confidence. Um, so if you actually look, there is still a large chunk of that squad that are actually, you know, players that were promoted to the championship with us a few years ago. Obviously, we've had a, few, a couple come and go. Obviously, we've a fair few new players. There's still a fair few players in there um, that came up. So fair play to Route, you know, for gradually progressing the, progressing the mentality of them players. And hopefully, you know, we can push on that little bit further you know obviously with the academy boys it would be nice but obviously you want to you don't want to overexpose them too quickly um and then their heads kind of drop um you know so and it, it i wouldn't mind if it's gradual but you know as Stephen touched on with Rowett's coming about essay is going to be a start for us next season i do feel like Rowett will possibly be under a little bit of pressure if he does change system to not have wingers or we keep seeing like vogel Samar and what more trotted out on the wings or whatever no, absolutely. I do agree with you there. I mean, Vogel Slammer is going to score 20 goals next season, is he not? I mean, <laughs> no, I mean to be fair, Rowett did say that he does expect Vogel Slammer to get I, double digits this season. Off. Yeah, I remember seeing that. He... So, you know, watch this space. Um, we'll, we'll see. You know, 
I, hopefully second season does a bit better. Um, yeah, he's, so, just in, he's had a season in England to adjust, right, Steven? So, for example, yeah. he's going to be our main outlet next season. Forgetting this bit in Bradshaw, he's going to do the business for us. Well, uh, if we look at Man City, you know, Bernardo Silva went there first season was terrible. Riyad Mahrez was terrible. Jack Grealish was terrible. Second season, they just absolutely smash it. So, on, by those standards, Voggy's going to be golden boot in the championship and getting in the German squad by the end of the by the end of next season. But no, I think squad player. But Rowett's comments when he when you make comments like that, you fans don't forget that and Millwall supporters don't forget many they don't forget players that do things you know to us in the past and sure. you know we always remember so you know he's going to have to back up some of the things that that he said or you know otherwise it's going to be a long season for him I think Rowett that is <laughs> some more quotes from Rowett this time about another academy player Alex Mitchell um, that came out today saying he'd done exactly what was required during his loan stay um, obviously, he stays long loan at St Johnston. I think he made 29 appearances for St Johnston in all Scottish Premier in, in, in the Scottish Premiership. Won the Young Player of the Year as well, whilst there and towards the end of the season for them. And Rowett was quite saying the whole point of him going out on loan is to see how he can bridge that gap between where he was at and get into our first team. We had St Johnston alone. Can he go there and get experience, game time, and develop further? He's done exactly that. Towards the end, just before and after Cal left, he had not played every game. But he's really he played a really good amount of games and had some really good experiences there against really good opposition. The question is always the same: Can Alex come back in preseason and show his development, and that he's close to being involved with us regularly? If he is, then absolutely fantastic, and he can change for a place in our team. If he's not, then we decide what the next steps are. But he, can, he has taken himself out of his comfort zone and proved himself. We watch his games and his clips. He comes back with a chance to fight for a place in our team and squads. What do you reckon, Dan? Alex Mitchell next season? I'm not sure. I'm personally not sure on this one. I mean, never say never. I, I think I really want him to succeed. He's still quite young, Alex Mitchell. He's only 21. Just, you know, Danny... that's that Sam just checking his age now. Yeah, he's, he's still 21. 21. So 21. Even if they have a look at, you know, we have to at least have a look at him in pre-season. I think mm. I touched on the budget earlier with Nisbet getting players in cheaper. For me, we still need another centre half. You know, I think. In, in an ideal world, Charlie Cresswell becomes a Millwall player for <laughs> most of us this summer. Yeah. But, you know, we're, we're not here to talk about the low knees. Um, we're here to talk about players that are currently Millwall players at the minute, uh, possibly players we want to become Millwall players later. Um, you know, we've got to at least have a look at him. And if we don't quite think he's up to that standard, um, I think what you've got to do is then look, do what Luton did with a the deal they did for a goalkeeper in January from Barnsley. Mm-hmm. And they sent Eisted to Barnsley on loan in January. So we get the player, uh, the club we're hopefully going to sign said player from, whoever that is. They get a replacement and some cash for a season. And we can also get experience out of Alex Mitchell growing. I think it's got to be stuff like that where, you know, we, we've got to be a little bit smarter sometimes in the market. But, you know, we've definitely got to take a look at him in pre-season, see what he's got to offer. He's had three loan spells now, uh, Stephen. I think he went to Bromley and impressed towards the end of their season. He got into playoffs with them. Went to Orient and they loved him as well. And then he's gone to St. Johnston and they've loved him as well. I guess the te- that is testament to him. He seems to take to it like a duck to water. And, you know, he's built like an absolute shit out. So I don't think physicality is going to be an issue with him in that sense. What do you reckon about Alex Mitchell and whether he can make a name for himself this year for us? Uh, you said just while we were talking about it that you wasn't sure on this one. And I have to agree with you. I, yeah. I, I'm it's just one of those where you're looking at now, you know, we've had Hutchinson and Cooper for a long time and that's great. And they've been great players, or great servants for us over the years, but they, they also, you knew you could rely on them and they were dependable defenders. I'm not saying Mitchell isn't, but we don't know enough about him to, is he ready to replace? Cause he's going to replace, it, 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 I did replace Sean Hutchinson because we all know that his knees are going to, are going to go, and he's perhaps the one that's that's likely his place is under threat. Um, in a three centre back position, maybe Hutchinson has can prolong his his career with us. But uh, look, you can only go on the fans that see him week in week out. Orient loved him, Bromley loved him, St Johnston loved him. You know, he's a Millwall player. He he comes across like someone who you could really see in a Millwall shirt and and be a dominant defender. I really hope it works out, but I don't want us to to pin all our hopes on him to replace. Potentially, our club captain it, it, it go a little bit sour, but but certainly the signs are there that he could he could definitely have a long term future with us. Maybe it's one of those ways waiting the wings for his opportunity. I suppose he's only three seasons out on loan now, Dan. I mean, maybe it's his opportunity to make up the numbers in the squad, be on the bench a few times if the opportunity comes to him. I think the only why there's a hesitation in my head with it is I've not seen him play that often, but also when I have seen him play, 
is he that good with the ball at his feet? You know, but then again, is that something that's a necessity with Rowe? It's kind of chops and changes based on what kind of tactics we play, formation we play. But I say you not worry about with Mitchell when I've seen him play a few times. But I suppose there's no harm having him in and around the squad maybe this season. What do you reckon? No, possibly. Um, well, you know, it kind of depends out how, how they sit. if they think you know Hutchinson. If we're going to be playing three centre backs, let let's say theoretically we're playing three centre backs, and you know, you look who our centre backs possibly are at the club at the moment. We have Hutchinson, who's a little bit injury prone. We've got Cooper mm-hmm. and Murray Wallace, who are both left footers. We've got Leonard, who's been offered a new deal. No news on him yet, but he's quite injury prone. So, you know, I think if we're going to be playing mainly with three, I think you've either got to be looking to, you've probably got to be looking to keep him at the minute if we aren't going to add a centre half. If we're looking at a two, you could possibly make a case for him to maybe go out on loan. Um, but, you know, if, it's if Hutchinson or or Leonard go, you know, like with injuries, that's that's going to be a, it's going to be a problem for us if he's not possibly around or we don't have anyone else in the squad. Leonard one's an interesting one, isn't it? I mean, you've touched on him there. It's gone a bit quiet, hasn't it, guys? I, I don't know. I guess he's on his holidays or whatever, and it's kind of kind of you know been hushed away. But nothing's been reported, has it, Stephen? I've not seen anything. Have you? Or no, I guess to me that might suggest that he's been offered a deal that's perhaps not not perhaps what he feels is probably the best he can get. Maybe, I don't know. I, I, I know pay as you play probably isn't going to be a thing now because he could drop down to League One and get a full-term contract it, it, easy with a player of his ability. But it is an interesting one and perhaps he's maybe waiting to see what the club's position position is in, in you know are they going to play with two midfielders or three centre backs where is he going to fit in just on the just touching on the Alex Mitchell and, and for Leonard on this as well last two seasons Dan Ballard coming on loan smashed it let's be honest he was he was very good Charlie Cresswell overall smashed it we'd have him back in a heartbeat if if we could this season we you know we've we've improved year on year whoever comes in whoever the centre back is to hopefully play alongside Cooper um you know again that's another one that a deal that ha- you know they've been in contact contract talks with him for months and it's it's not progressed has to come in and have that ability to improve us mm. it might be really harsh on Alex Mitchell because he might he might prove us all wrong and be absolutely fantastic but is he the one to take us forward and and is Leonard the one Leonard's more of a squad player I think I don't think he'd yeah. be a regular starter um, but someone has to come in and really improve us in that centre half position because we have got better each year. I just want to come come in on Leonard quickly as well. You know, he's he's thirty one. He's getting on a bit now. Obviously, he might want to try and go somewhere and might play regular football. I've just looked up. He was at, he's actually from Plymouth. So you know, if if maybe they can you know give him maybe you know sort of a guarantee of a bit more regular football, they they could probably they might take a bit more championship experience in in their squad, and he might want to go closer to home. So you know, I maybe like to see him maybe get a one more one more year on his deal. You know, I think we're going to be going for a bit of a you know, transition. Well, I I think we probably could do a bit of a kind of transitional summer with probably quite a few bodies coming in. So I maybe wouldn't mind him staying in and around the squad to keep a bit of continuity and a bit of squad cover. But it's what the player wants as well. It's not just what the club wants. And I don't try to be the funny one all the time, but I suppose continuity, you've got George Evans, who's got another year on his contract as well, guys. So we don't need that much more continuity from Leonard, right? <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> he's, he's just come to me. I don't even plan these out. I'm like, oh God, George Evans still in another season. <laughs> yeah, I know. He's, well, got, he's got a superb agent. That's all I'm saying. He's, he's agent. He was, at Man, he was at Man City as well as a youngster, mm. by the way. <laughs> He got a three and a half year deal when he signed for us, Stephen. Mm. After that January, I know it was during lockdown, and he played right side centre half and looked all right to be fair at times. And then that back three, I remember when he had Jed and Bennett up front. But three and a half year deal for George Evans. We don't even get. I don't even think Fleming's got more than a three year deal when he signed for us. It's, it's unbelievable. Uh, look, George <laughs> Evans is always going to be the one that everyone just batters, and you know he's 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 probably better than what we give him. <laughs> Mill fans give him credit for, but. Look, in a, in a three back, maybe he there's a there's a role for him. But again, if you're looking, if you're going for as I say, Ballard, Cresswell, Evans, you, you can't. That's not moving forward. That really isn't moving forward. I I think I think he knows. He must know he's not going to get much football this year. He must be looking to to go. But while someone's paying him, while someone's willing to pay, you know, got on his contract, he doesn't have to move anywhere, does he? 
I think typically when it's a year left and under a year, that's when you start to see players get paid up. I think he probably would be sitting on it like this time last year. We're all thinking, oh, he's only got a year left. Let's get rid of him. There's a reason mm. why we didn't. It's because he's got another year sitting on, so it makes sense now. Mm. But I mean, I suppose he is at a stage where he probably will get paid up. And I agree with you. He's, he's a good pass of the ball, but he's, he likes playing walking football. He just plays too slow motion for me. That's all it is, really. <laughs> I think there was about... When he came in, yeah, he, he was okay when he came in until he got injured. He came back from that. He wasn't very good. Uh, I remember him about then having one good game against Birmingham at home where, to be fair, he did score a pretty good goal in the top corner. I will give him that. But, you know, I, I think did, uh, we did a pod on this the other week. I think Stephen was on it with me. I think we touched it. He's, I think he's played about 200 minutes of football this season. Mm. Um, you know, we, yeah. it, when we've got a small squad, we can't afford to be carrying players that, have the di- people say if, if we don't want to keep Evans who might be fit every week then we shouldn't be keeping Leonard who won't be fit every week but the difference in quality between them two is so significant it is mm. definitely worth trying to keep a player like Ryan Leonard whereas George, Evan- George Evans should be you know swiftly <laughs> pushed towards the exit door <laughs> well that's all the exits I mean are we expecting any more exits from Mill when we think about our squads is there anyone else that springs out as Deadwood or I think it's I mean, is it maybe Bart Bielkowski or George Long? Or if we're going to sign a keeper, we'll talk about targets in a minute, I suppose. But I just thought we'll touch on the exits. Could Bart be on his way out or someone like that maybe looking to play first team football? What do you reckon, Dan? I think the player, I think, you know, I would have liked to have seen it work out for Tyler Bury, but it just it just hasn't. And I, I just think it might be a bit too far gone now between him and the supporters um, you know, mm. he's, sh- he's shown glimpses, never shown it consistently. Um, I think it would probably just be best now, to be honest, for all parties. If we probably look to find him a, a, a new club, we could probably try and get a bit of cash for him. Um, so I think that's probably one, you know, I wouldn't be surprised to see that happen. Um, I think, you know, from my point of view, I don't think we need Long, Bar, and Truman. I think mm. having three of them is complete overkill. Um, to be honest, I, I'd maybe be looking at. Eve, I, I'd want to move George Long on. To be completely honest, I don't think he's the answer. And you know, that, I don't know what's going on with Bart, but you know, he's, he's only got older. I don't know. If they're probably going to affect him. I mean, I wouldn't be against keeping him for a second choice, but then, you know, I, I wouldn't be opposed to moving on Long and Truman. You got Joe Wright in the youth squad as your third choice if you have a free keeper crisis because he hasn't made so many senior appearances. You can probably use the free agent. Or emergency loan market, and I'd I'd like us to get a new number one. But judging by Rowett's comments, I don't think it's going to happen. Interesting one, isn't it? I think he's put a lot of faith in Andy Marshall to be like in charge of the goalkeeping department, Stephen. Like you know, he's kind of saying like they're like he's just in charge of them, and that's the three keepers. And I feel like he just gives him free reign to do what he wants and decide who goes out on loan, which is why we signed Connell Truman, for example, just so that we can allow Sanford to go out on loan last season. Joe Wright went, I think, to at one point to the conference, I think to Bath. I mean. That, that for me, that sticks as like a. It is an interesting point there because I don't imagine Bart would have signed for much less than what he's already on. Albeit they went to number two, he probably would have signed another year on the same terms. I don't think, but it's not going to be cheap in that sense either. So it's an interesting conundrum the goalkeeping position. I feel like. I think you said earlier you're the funny one. I'm going to be the downbeat killjoy one now because <laughs> I cannot see us buying a goalkeeper this mm. transfer window and I hate to say that because I think we like Dan and possibly yourself Omar we do need another goalkeeper because George Long isn't the answer I do like the the, the lad right um I like the look of him obviously us three were at the um playoff the uh, under 21 under 23 playoff final and he, he looked quite good he made some good saves and composed on the ball and, and handling was pretty good obviously it might be a bit too much of a push to put him straight in the first team straight away, but he's certainly one to keep an eye on. But I can't see Bart moving on, really. He's got his deal. I just can't see him. He he knows and the club know that he's got an issue with his knees. We all, Everybody knows it. It's why he was taken out of the side. So he's got a deal. Again, a bit like George Evans, he doesn't have to move on. George Long, look, I think we all know what the general the- feeling is on him but mm-hmm. I think Rowett is going to stick with him and I think he's going to he's going to persevere with him and I think you'll see us looking to try and play a little bit more football out from the back with the three centre halves if he goes down that route which means Long will play um, unless an incredible goalkeeper becomes available to us you know you, you get the comments don't you that agents 
you know, try and, you know, shift their players on. I think there's some good goalkeepers in and around our level that we should be looking at. But unless one is actually handed to us on a plate, um, I think we'll be seeing George Long between the sticks um, come the first game of the season. Cheers for that. Really positive about the pre-season and the season coming up. <laughs> but you're right. And I think also goalkeeping, the position is one of those where it needs to be settled for day one of pre-season. You don't want mm. to start ripping that up. And if there's no movement between now and the next couple of weeks, I'd be surprised if any of them do move on, to be fair. Um, go on then. Uh, we've got five bits to go on the show anyway. I think, Dan, you may... Did you make a list of targets then? Did I get that right? Or people you want to try and bring in? Start us off, mate. Just give us some yeah. names. I mean, I've... I've... I've got. I'd like us to kind of make. Um, what is it? Six players. I've got that. Six positions. I'd like us to try and strengthen. I'd like us to sign a goalkeeper, which we just touched on. A yep. right back, a centre half, a left back, a winger, and a striker. So, a goalkeeper. We've touched on it. I would like us to either try and sign that Carl Rushworth on loan from Brighton. He's just been on loan at Lincoln this season. Yep. I think he's a phenomenal goalkeeper. And if we do want to play out from the back a little bit, he is. You know, he's very comfortable with the ball at his feet. Or Harry Eisted, who's just left Luton but been on loan at Barnsley in the playoff final. He was phenomenal. Mm. He was. Um, yeah, he was. Right back, I'd, I'd quite like us to take a look at Dabo from Coventry. He's just been released. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll keep him off penalties. I think that would mm. be the, the <laughs> sensible solution there. But, you know, he's looks a very. he's got a lot of championship experience, looks a good player at this level. He's very quick um, as well, isn't he? I think when I've yeah. seen him play a few times, yeah. down the right side. Mm. Uh, Centre back, I'd like us to go back to Barnsley again and have a look at Mads Anderson, uh, centre half there. He's their captain, leader. He always, again, looks very composed on the ball. Um, you know, I think he looks, and he's played at the championship level again before, which is, I think he was part of the team when Barnsley finished in the playoffs um, a few years ago under Valerian Ismail. Um, left back, I, I'd like us to maybe have a look at Harry Toffolo on loan. I don't think there's room for him at Forest. You know, they obviously built a huge squad last season. I think they're going to be looking to trim that down um so i think there could be the opportunity for him to move mm-hmm. he's he's based he's was born in the south he's had a successful time at Pom- pompey i know he had a pretty unsuccessful six months here um but you know second chance i would i wouldn't be opposed to that um on the wing i'd like us to go back to holland and try and sign this vincent van croyge um from sparta rotterdam i know we've spoken a little bit about him in the chat um, I just looked before we came on here. He's got 14 goals and 12 assists this season in the area of Visa. Um, contracts apparently up at the end of next season. So I think that should definitely be one we're trying to take a look at if we're keen to keep signing from um, overseas. And then up top, I'd, I've got two down here. I'd either like us to look at um, Mooney's on loan from Fulham. I know he's been on loan at Borough this season, didn't have a particularly enjoyable spell, but he's a bit different to what we've got up front, a bit more of a kind of target man, which I think we kind of probably need. Um, or there's a player called Reese Healy from, he's just been released from Toulouse, but I've watched a lot of him when he was playing in the lower leagues for Torquay and then for MK Dons. And he was a really, really good, not just a really good goal scorer, but a really good footballer. So I'd like us to possibly take a look at him, especially on a free transfer. Interesting one with the forward line. I, I mean, I don't know what you reckon, Steve, but he's right to pick up, obviously. This bit is not, and Bradshaw seems to be quite a similar profile. There's not really a plan B there. There's no Matt Smith. There's no someone to mix it up, up in the mix for us. I quite, I quite like the shout of trying to get a target man in there, Stephen, from that, from that list. Uh, uh, the, the one that I would love to us to go and have a look at, and I think we were interested in him is, uh, last summer, was uh, Ellis Sims from um, mm. Everton. I think he looked really good for Sunderland in that role. I think he, he tormented us in that game at the Stadium of Light. Um, scored the goal, uh, the third goal, I think, and just his general all-round play was was quite good. I, Sunderland obviously had a good end to the season. We 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 know that, but I think in that initial transition period, they missed him. They they didn't, you know, they lost a little bit when he come out of the side. He's never going to get in at Everton. He's the fans hounded him outside the ground at Everton. There was videos on social media of that. So I think definitely a target man, just to change it up a little bit, have that little bit of a plan B. You've got the quality of Fleming, you know, on the ball to put crosses into the box. And even Vogelsam has got a decent he could a decent cross, decent delivery. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, something a little bit different. Uh, I know we've sort of got a couple of minutes left, but to touch on what Dan said, most of the positions there, I, I, I agree with. I think we, we certainly sure. need. I think, it again, it depends what route we're going to go down. I would like us to sign two wingers. 
Um, but if we're not going to play a system where we we have wingers in, obviously that that will change, and you'll have to get in a couple of wing backs. But um, certainly Dabo from from Coventry again, you know he missed a penalty. You know that's what people are going to think of. But a quick for a wing back that perhaps can give some some um, some competition to Danny Mac, and and we desperately need a left back. Desperately, desperately need a left back. Yeah, Especially we haven't got a left back. back. We haven't even got a left. Well, I mean. Murray Gary Rout, Mike, I was about to say Gary Rout, Mike Class, Murray Wallace, the left back in the youth game. He looked very good. Um, probably the best player on the pitch, actually. I'd go as far as saying. Um, just before, definitely... yeah. Just before we go, um, we'll move on to towards the sort of the outro. Um, Callum Styles. It's another one. I was about to say. Yeah, I was about to say. I was yeah. about to say this list, no one's yeah. at Callum Styles. And uh, well, I've, it, I've it tried not to go for us, right? So I've, I've tried not to go down the loan route. Um, because you know, if we if we was touching on players that we had last season, obviously Cresswell, obviously Styles, um, probably probably Shackleton. To be honest, I quite liked him. Didn't quite work out, and his agent said no as well um, by mm. the sounds of it. So that's that's that. But I, I kind of wanted to try try and go for a bit more. You know, I wanted to stay realistic, but look at some different names because I don't think outside of Styles we're going to get anyone. But I'd love to get Callum Styles back down the den. I think it'd be an interesting show to discuss a bit more about more targets, I suppose, next time out. So gives us something to look forward to to do another show in the near future. Um, Dan, thanks for coming on today, mate. Appreciate your input and some great names suggested there. And if, if you've not um, obviously thought about who we can sign, would you reckon Dan's names? And be sure to put a comment in YouTube and let us know what you think. But yeah, thanks, Dan, for coming on today, mate. No worries. Thank you very much. And as well, I'll just do a quick pump forward. We are probably going to do a live show next Thursday off the back of the fixture release uh, live Twitter space try and get some of your guys thoughts uh, on the fixture list you know the key games kind of the, the first the last um, the leads any new grounds you may be looking forward to going to certainly for me it's Plymouth and Southampton um, so you know we're probably going to do a Twitter space on that next week sounds good Stephen thanks for coming on mate any last words yeah just again um, we're back um, you know, it's, it's great to be talking all things Mill and for a signing to be through the door. Um, just one thing for me, if, if anyone's commenting or on, on across social media, um, realistically, do you think we will be um, seeing a new goalkeeper come into uh, the den next season or will it be between Long and Bill Kowski again? Let us know what your, your thoughts are on that. Nicely put. Cheers, chats coming on. And if you're new around here, be sure to like and subscribe to the video. And if you're listening on podcasts, be sure to follow. We're on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and all the other podcast avenues. Check us out on socials at that mill pod, Twitter, TikTok, and Facebook. That is. And we'll be back shortly, probably next few days or next week, to discuss more things. Mill before preseason begins. Thanks for tuning in, guys, and speak to you soon.